Hey YouTube, it's Lindsay. You're looking at Janie. She's up in the back of the Kubota right now harvesting juniper berries. This is a, what is it Janie, a northeastern? Eastern redwood. Yes, northeastern yeah. redwood cedar. And she is picking berries. I'll show you what they look like in the baskets. I just have them in here. The rain is really starting. We're gonna make some kind of cool oil and gin and all kinds of stuff. Janie, grab me a branch to show me a nice cluster. There you go, people. They look like blueberries, so you just pick them. I'll show you guys a video later on how to make something cool out of them. Hey guys. All right, so now the juniper berries are in the dehydrator. I don't know what happened to my other video. It didn't record for some reason, but let me show you this. This is my jar of um, finished berries. This is a half gallon jar. This is the one that will be for me. All the ones that are in here now are just gonna be for my girlfriend, Janie. And we actually may um, contact this lady that we took a class at uh, her store to do an elderberry extract. And uh, we're gonna see if we can maybe sell her some juniper berries um, in exchange for maybe trade on some of her other herbs. She's got a wild apothecary. So you can see the berries when they dry out turn a brownish, reddish, purple. They're not so vibrant blueberry style. Let me show you. I just put these ones in. You can see they got the blueberry look to them still. Let's see if I can compare them side by side for you. See? Dried and not dried. So, you can tell I put paper towels in this bad boy. And um, that's not going to hurt your dehydrator as long as you have one of these low functioning ones like me. I mean, I have, I have a sunbeam. I inherited this from my mother when she got married in the 90s and she got divorced and then uh, she never really wanted this thing so I got it which is great. I make all kinds of stuff with it for my soaps. I de dehydrate my oranges for my soaps. But anyway what I do, if this thing would ever just sit right, there we go, um, is yesterday when I did these ones it took me from 1.30 in the afternoon till midnight last night. It was a long time to dehydrate them but they're perfectly dehydrated now. Um, what I like to do is I set a timer on my oven. You see there's one right now. I know, 51 minutes, but what I do is I do it for an hour. And then I flip the trays. I'll move this one down here, this one back up here, and I just keep rotating them every hour. So that was 13 hours to just dry these ones. And I might have gone a little overboard, but it's better to dry it out a little bit more than to have moist because it won't hold. It'll, it'll rot on you if it's moist, so I, I'd rather have it a little more dry. So. That's that. Next thing I want to show you guys is how I'm going to make some juniper oil. It's going to be an infused oil, not an essential. An essential oil is done with diffusing, and I actually recently tried that and had a horrible turnout on my oil. It was very, um, I don't know how to explain it. It didn't smell as good as it should have, and they said that you, you know, your oils can uh, lose their quality if it's not done properly. So I think I definitely need to, you know, invest in a real distiller for that. But I tried it with a pan and. It worked to a degree, but these guys, I'm going to grind them up in my little magic bullet and I'm going to put oil in them and they're going to marinate for a while. So let me show you guys how to do that. Alright guys, now we're ready to make our infused juniper oil. I've got out the ingredients that I'm going to need. I have a uh, pad, pen, pen, pencil, whatever, tape. That's to make your label for on your jar. You can see I made a label for the um, juniper berries that are done. I make the common name on top, the Eastern Redwood Cedar, and then the um, Genius, which I can't even freaking pronounce. It's like Juniperus virginis and nah. <laughs> I don't even know. And then I do the date that I dried it. Um, I always date everything because things do get old and crappy. Uh, also on your lid for your oil, um, it's going to be Juniper Oil and, you know, the same thing, the Genius name and the date that you make the oil because the oil is going to last one year. So. What we're going to do is, um, ah, my squirrel's bothering me right now. She's, she's being a bugger and she's trying to get on the counter over there and steal fruit. And yes. Oh, you know, she's grabbing the camera. See, watch. Oh, no, nope, you're not allowed on this counter. This is the squirrel free counter, but she'll use me as a ladder. So I might have to stop this video and put her away. Maple, cut it out. Okay. So, um, oh, she did it again. Sidetracking me. You're going away. Sorry, for right now. Okay, she just decided to take off, so we're good. <laughs> she heard Cage, and she was like, no! Okay, 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill this jar here to about this area because this is the jar I'm going to use to uh, keep the oil in for uh, the three to six weeks it's going to take to make. Um, and then I'm going to transfer it from here into here, which is my little blender cup. You can use the blender or you can use good old fashioned mortar and pestle. Your choice. I'm tired. I don't feel like doing this, so I'm going to do this. So, there's Grady sleeping. Here we go. I think it's kind of cool that these look like elderberries. They're just not as um, juicy as an elderberry because the elderberry has like more of a raisin type consistency where this is really dry. Okay. So, the jar is filled below the lip and we're going to transfer that there. Gotta put you down for a second. Okay. Now we're ready to go over to the magic bullet. Easy as pie. Okay. So you could also use a food processor. That would work too. Put you down again. <laughs> Made a little bit of a mess. I'm going to discard this. I'm not going to put this in my oil because you can contaminate your oil by using uh, anything with. Um, Moisture, that's another thing actually. Let's talk about safety when you're making your oil. Um, you don't want to use anything that's got moisture on it. So the jar that you're using should be bone dry. Um, also, same thing with your any air implements. They need to be bone dry if you're using them, which I had to actually take a blow dryer to these because I took them out of the dishwasher. So, um, Also, another safety thing, um, your oils can mold if the material here is not submerged completely in oil. So you're going to keep this on your kitchen counter every day. You're going to um, shake it, you know, just go nuts with it, and then open it up and smell it, make sure it doesn't smell rancid. You need to make sure that that level is covering the material. That's a big thing. Um, also, like I said, no moisture. So that's the only thing that can go wrong with your stuff. That's why I choose to do dry herbs instead of um, doing a fresh herb. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and add our sweet almond oil. This um, is actually a food grade oil so you can consume this. You can use several different types of oils. Um, you can use extra virgin olive oil. You can use coconut oil, although I could see that being a problem because it gets solid sometimes. I don't think it would probably infuse as well. Um, and you can see I'm going to use a spoon to try and get the oil to totally go through all the mixture here. Don't want any air bubbles. It's got to be fully submerged. So, um, And then other oils, walnut oil, uh, grapeseed oil, stuff like that. Those are all good food grade things. You can use them in your soaps and stuff like that. And you know, your skin products if you're going to make lip balm or that kind of stuff. Okay. You can use it in salves, ointments. Also, um, something that's kind of cool about the uh, juniper berries. It can be used on game meat. So I sense a kitchen magic episode coming up soon with el the, um, not elderberry, I keep saying elderberry because it looks like it. The juniper berry might be used in that. A um, couple other things too. Kind of interesting. I'm going to put this down for a second. Um, the Roman Catholics, when they would do an exorcism, would burn juniper berry because they believed it was really strong stronger than um, like sage to like you know ward off evil spirits and stuff so if you have a haunted house burn some uh, juniper berry also I think they believed it was a good birth control method I think it was used for birth control but don't quote me because I don't want anybody getting pregnant thinking they could just take this also precautions with taking juniper um, it's very good for uh, bladder and kidney function but too much of it can be a bad thing so it's better not to go overboard with this. Also, um, you can use it to make gin. Can't use the infused oil to make gin, but you can use the juniper berry. So now that's the oil. That's made. Um, let me show you. You can see the oils above. It's like right about here. It's the oil level, but you're going to keep that above your material at all times. So just keep it on your counter. I'm going to keep it here at my other apothecary items and stuff like that. So. 
Um, just shake it every day, smell it, check it. Um, and that's that for the infused oil. So, um, I guess look forward to a video, guys, about making gin, because that'll be my next thing. Ciao. Oh, and you know what? In three to six weeks, I'll show you how to process this, um, which we will have to strain off the uh, material with the cheesecloth and just reserve the oil, and then the oil will keep for a full year. So uh, I'll show you how to do that in a couple weeks when that's ready. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, I mean, the oil can be used in two weeks, the earliest. I know that it can be used for, like, a detoxifying massage, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, when I told you guys that it's a cedar, just keep in mind that cedars are junipers, which is kind of weird. They're actually common um, bonsai trees are usually the uh, cedars, which is kind of cool. I mean, you, you can get, um, if you don't have a cedar in your yard, you can probably go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get a creeping juniper, and within a year you could have berries yourself. So, I mean, it's pretty attainable. It's kind of cool. Um, what else? Smells like pine. Yeah. You can make a tincture out of it, which is just, uh, you just take the berries, crush them up, like I did with the magic bullet and then put rubbing alcohol in it and let that distill for a couple weeks shaking it um, and then strain the material off same situation and you can use that for bug bites it reduces swelling so anything where you would have a swelling situation you can use it on the skin so another good use for it and that's about it alright guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you soon